we're back at my goddamn buddy Steve Reichland. Today, he is going to teach us how to make a Philly cheesesteak his pretentious-ass PBS-loving way. Why I hate fucking PBS. This is it, folks. The big kahuna. A whole wood-grilled beef tenderloin stuffed with smoked cheese and flame-roasted peppers. Move oh. over, Philadelphia. Make way for the Project Smoked Cheese Steak. Oh, yeah. Yeah, move over, Philadelphia, the place that made cheese steak famous. Also, I don't think cheese steaks are traditionally served rare. I created this cheese steak at the farmhouse of my producer, Matt Cohen. The occasion was a tailgate party we were filming for television. I had the idea to substitute a whole beef tenderloin for the tradition. Okay, so he took basically a piece of meat that's going to cost you about $150 to $200 to make his cheesesteak. Cheesesteaks were made famous because they took inexpensive cuts of steak and made them delicious and oily and greasy. Okay? That's a fucking cheesesteak! Traditional hoagie roll. Now, the cheesesteak may seem a little complicated, but in fact, it's a series of simple steps. Step number one, make the garlic parsley bread. Start by slicing an Italian... Why would I make that first? ...Italian bread into half-inch thick slices. Lay a slice of bread on your cutting board. This is garlic parsley butter, just made with finely chopped garlic and parsley. The recipe is on our website. I <sighs> can't figure that out. I am buttering the bread on both sides. You're going to grill it on both sides, and it just gives you twice as much flavor. So you slice and butter the bread ahead of time. You grill it at the very last minute. Step number two, the chipotle mayonnaise. So Why in the fuck do you take the most expensive cut of beef and want to slather it in hot sauce? So it starts with mayonnaise and chopped. Again, it's just the sign of a bad chef. Canned chipotle chilies. Chipotles, of course, are smoked. God, anywhere, anytime, I would take this motherfucker around in a cooking challenge. Jalapeno. You now I can fucking kick his ass at grilled cheese. No peppers. So it's another way we'll reinforce the smoke flavor. Simply grab a whisk and whisk these ingredients together. Again, if you buy a cheaper steak, then by all means do this shit. Why, in the name of God, would you do this with a fucking tenderloin? You paid for a premium, premium cut of meat. That should be the hero, not macerated with chipotle mayo. And you get the creaminess of mayonnaise and the smoky fire of the chipotles. Hell, I might even be fine if he was making a chicken sandwich. Step number three, grill the onions and peppers. Now, I've cut the onions into these half-inch slices. And how do you keep an onion slice from falling apart on the grill? Well, you skewer it with a toothpick. Just insert the skewer, and you'll run it through the onion. There you go. You know, I'm sorry, but the people that watch this guy and think he's fucking good are people that don't grow. Either they don't grow regularly or they're just starting or they don't know anything and they don't bother to research anything. Anyone who actually knows what the fuck they're doing knows this guy is a total fucking hack. Beautiful. I mean, I would challenge him anywhere, anytime. And I'll tell you what, before the challenge starts, I'll drink 12 beers. And I'll still be able to outcook him while drunk. And then you know, with the intense heat of the fire, those ends of the toothpicks are going to burn. So I'll just simply snip them off. Now. 
easier if you just use metal skewers. I'll drizzle the onion slices with extra virgin olive oil. Why? And spread it around on the onion slice. Then season the onion slices with sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Oh my God, that is not freshly ground black pepper. He has this myth that you can grind pepper at 5 a.m. and at 7 p.m. it's still freshly, no! <coughs> That's why every other fucking TV chef and every other chef I've seen that once again knows what the fuck they're doing keeps that motherfucking pepper mill right there. All the goodness of the of the oil that was contained in the peppercorn is gone. Congratulations, dickhead. And turn the onions over. And drizzle and season the other side the same way. You could have just done that on the grill. And for the peppers, I'm using poblano chilies. Uh, you'll simply grill them whole. To grill the cheesesteak and its various components, we're using a Kalamazoo gaucho grill. Oh, yes. Uh, the cost of this grill is $27,000. It's a wood-burning grill. You raise... No, it's also a propane grill and a charcoal grill. ...and lower the grate with this flywheel. You fuel the grill with hardwood logs. I've been lucky enough to get almond wood, one of my favorite woods for grilling. I'll just add the log to the fire. Oh my God, you can't even put it in there by hand, you fucking pussy. I'll lower the grill grate. I'm gonna be about 10 inches above the fire. And as always, you've seen me do this a million times. You wanna start by Brushing your grill grate. By the way, don't use those wire brushes. The uh, br uh, if the wires come off, they can get in your food, and you're in the hospital. Clean with a stiff wire brush. Then oiling it either with a folded paper towel, or I've made a cloth oiler by rolling up uh, a piece of white terry cloth. And you dip it in oil. I hate the jackasses that that listen to this guy. And draw. If, 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 if you're a man and you listen to him, just turn in your fucking man card. The Lord of Patriarchy commands it. Draw it across the bars of the grape. So first, arrange the onion slices on the grill grate. And then you'll put your whole peppers on it. One of the things I love uh, about God. going over with right, we're going a little is faster. is that every zone is different. We've got a hot zone over here. It's a little less hot here. So it's a very interactive form of grilling. In fact, what I'm going to do is move these over the hotter part of the fire. And once the onions are browned on one side, you just turn them over. That's not brown. That's black. Thanks to those toothpicks, they don't fall apart. And don't forget to turn your peppers. You want to char and blister the skins on all sides. Great. And the peppers are roasted too. Okay. So on the onions, all you want to do is just pull out the toothpicks. On the peppers, what I like to do is just cut the peppers in half lengthwise, cut out this core end, scrape out the seeds, and your peppers are ready to go. Also, if you want it a little spicier, leave some of the seeds in. That's where most of the heat is. This is a trimmed grass fed. Oh my God. Again, he kept the fucking thing on ice. Dear friends and whoever fucking listens to me, if you would like a perfect goddamn beef roast dinner, or perfect burger, or a perfect what the fuck ever when it comes to beef, or chicken, 
or anything else, you want to let your meat rise to room temperature. Now, yes, if you leave it out at room temperature for 12 hours, you're kind of fucked and probably should throw it away. However, 10 minutes ain't going to kill you. An hour ain't going to kill you. Beef tenderloin, and you want to cut a pocket. Because basically what happens is, is he throws this stone-cold meat on the grill. What happens is, is that the outside is, co it, it cooks in, pro it doesn't cook evenly. So basically the inside is still dead raw and cold while the outside is damn, is done. It. So by the time it's ready to come off the grill, it's, you're fucked. Through the top to within. A so before you put meat on the grill, forget everything this cocksucker has said, leave your meat on the counter and let it get up to room temperature. Trust me, you're not going to die. You're not going to be in the hospital with fucking E. coli. You're not going to be fucking having food poisoning. What you're going to have is delicious, evenly cooked meat from the grill. Trust the Lord of Patriarchy on this. About a half an inch of the other end. Again, if you leave food out, if you leave meat out, raw meat out at room temperature for hours and hours and hours on end, you're fucked. But let it come up to room temperature. Just like again, these are only the advice I got from you know chefs with no reputation. Not like the mighty Steve Reichlin, like you know Gordon Ramsay and Wolfgang Puck told me to do this. No, no, no. They only cooked for the fucking president. That great. And then in the pocket, first of all, you want to place the peppers. And then I'll cut the onions in half. Place a half onion in the pocket. Also, again, Philly cheesesteak is about using a cheap cut, cheap, inexpensive cut of steak and making it more than the sum of its parts. It's easy to make a tender, delicious steak when your goddamn meat is a fucking Philly fucking cheesesteak. Oh, I hate this dude so fucking much. I hate him so goddamn much. Great. Getting hungry yet? And I have smoked provolone cheese. And place a slice of cheese in the pocket. And don't forget to season the ingredients with sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Now, Project uh, Smoked Oh, goddamn it. I'll have to get it back. Uh, where were we in this son of a bitch? All right, good enough. Okay, problem here. The provolone's going to melt and melt out. That's why you put it at the end or on top. But whatever, I'm dumbass. Going to slide them under in the pocket. Okay, let's go from here. And don't forget to season the ingredients with sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Now, I have pieces of butcher string, and I'm going to slide them under the beef tenderloin at about two inch intervals and tie the tenderloin closed with this by the way how was your friend with spending three hundred dollars on this meal surgeon's lock knot i use all the time pull tight pull through the loop great and then just snip off the ends of the string so now you'll season the outside of the cheesesteak. Extra virgin olive oil on the outside. Remember, beef tenderloin is a very lean cut of meat. So you always want to put a nice coat of oil on the outside. Why? Just roll this around. Beautiful. And next, season the outside with sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Any day of the fucking week. Here's your cheesesteak. You want to place it on the grill. Okay, so you put a cheese side down so all the cheese is melting out. Great. Wonderful, Steve. Right over the hot fire. Cooking time, roughly four minutes per side. The wood fire will both cook and smoke the meat. When the tenderloin is browned on the bottom... Um, cooking over wood... 
it does impart a smoke flavor, but it isn't much. That's why it's more... Uh, yeah, you're not really smoking it, Steve. Give it a quarter turn, and you'll just brown it on all sides. And meanwhile, to get a leg up, I'll start grilling off that garlic bread. Beautiful. Once the garlic bread is browned on one side... Okay, this is the only thing I would have actually kept in the fridge and put stone cold on the grill. Side, turn it over. Just because the way bread toasts... On the other side, and the night and butter melts is filled with this wonderful grilled. Cook. So yeah, there's what I want. But then again, that's bread that that cooks in seconds. Garlic aroma. Look at that baby. Oh. Check out the cheesesteak. Sure, it looks done, but you always want to check with an instant read meat thermometer. We're looking for 130 to 135. That's a perfect medium rare. Nailed it. Uh, your steak wasn't medium rare. It was fucking rare, dog. How's that for a cheesesteak? You just want to cut off the strings. And then the moment funny how that cheese seems to be running out of one side i've been waiting for you slice the beef look at that you have onions peppers great smoky wood aroma perfect medium rare the cheese has melted into the meat this beef explodes with flavor no it's still there yeah. i will say I, I do have to admit i might have been wrong about the cheese part of it so take a slice of the grilled garlic I still wouldn't have done it like that, though. I would have just put the fucking shit on top. Bread. And spread it with a dollop of the chipotle mayonnaise. Again. Nice. Why? And then I'll take another slice of the beef. Yeah. What is Place he doing? A porno now? On bread. How's that for a sandwich? So I'll take a taste of the cheesesteak and that garlic bread. Man, this is unbelievable. The crunchy garlic toast, the fiery chipotle chili, the beef, the cheese. That is rare, dude. That is fucking rare. Now, no problems here. I like rare, but that ain't fucking medium rare. The charred peppers, the onions. This is like the 4th of July. And you're oh, my God. Get no, it's not. Because all you can fucking possibly taste is that fucking chipotle mayo. Yeah. Although we hope that you could cook a good dish, you only had a $27,000 grill. All right, that is this son of a bitch. God, I hate this man.